I want one of you or two of you, sister or brother, come in front, explain what we have learned until now. Five minutes without bringing anything. This will be two mark, two bonus points, eh? because this big. But at least you need to say, you can write something for at least uh, like five minutes. Okay? Brothers one, sisters one. Raise your hand, come in front. Anyone? Because if you don't raise your hand, I will pick you. When I pick you, then no bonus mark. Understood? Okay. Okay, Assalamualaikum everyone. Um, for the two bonus mark, I shall <laughs> explain what we have learned for four weeks uh, so far. All right. Um, in summary, first we start with the summary so we can keep track uh, so I don't skip up. In summary, we have started the, our first week with uh, 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 going through back to our basics, which is the SI unit uh, or SI unit conversion. Okay, uh, so that's what happened in the first week. So after the SI unit conversion, uh, Sir has started to talk about how waves could, uh, could show us the unknown world of the microscopic. So basically, uh, basically it's about wave lah. But through this wave, we have gone through for at least two weeks, which uh, we have gone through the properties of the waves, and also um, how um, how these wave properties help us in understanding uh, what is happening in the microscopic world. So um, for SI unit conversion, is very simple. Um, so we have gone through uh, this. Uh, uh, SI unit, uh, there's seven, right? it's not mistaken. There's uh, weight, uh, time, uh, what is that? <laughs> Mass. Uh, I think there's seven of it. But um, we can, uh, you guys can check back your notes. Uh, there's seven unit com uh, SI <laughs> unit. And how we want to convert this SI unit to uh, other units like, such as density, uh, sp uh, speed, and etc. So those SI unit conversion is, is very helpful, especially in... Uh, let's say, for example, we have a density. Uh, density is kilo, uh, kilogram per meter cube, or basically uh, weight over a certain uh, uh, its mass over a, a certain volume. So, how we want to use this uh, kilogram per meter cube and convert it to its SI unit equivalent uh, is very important. Or basically, um, uh, I, I also forgot lah. <laughs> but essentially, how uh, we can convert like certain uh, derived units to its SI unit where we can see like what is existing within the unit itself like for example the meter squared per uh, time second over a certain uh, area etc all right uh, that's how the SI unit conversion goes there's also um, in that week also we are also have gone through um, what you call um, uh, scientific notation where we have for example we have a meter for our uh, base uh, base unit and then we can go through the centimeter uh, millimeter uh, and then uh, going downward until picometer and then also we can go upward where it goes to uh, kilometer uh, and then all the way up to uh, tera so um, this all scientific um, notation prefixes we have around here has carried out uh, uh, a certain value of for example centimeter is times 10 to the power of negative 1 uh, millimeter is 10 times to the power of negative 2 and all the way to 10 power of negative 12 and going upwards, uh, it also goes the same way. Basically, 10 to the power of, I think, kilometer is 2, eh? 3. Eh? Sorry, guys. Uh, and then all the way to 10 to the power of 12. Lah. So that is the scientific notation prefixes. So um, from there also, um, what else have we learned that week? I forgot. Lah. You remember the one? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, uh, there's a lot of things in the SI unit convention. Uh, so also explained about us. Um, on the technological part where we start delving our ways into the world of wave. So, wave has certain properties. Um, uh, for example, uh, this is based on what I remember. Uh, uh, wave, um, how to differentiate wave. There's mechanical wave and there's electromagnetic uh, mechanical wave where it cannot travel in vacuum. So, how we c categorize this wave in vacuum. Can it travel in vacuum? So if it requires a medium to travel for, that is a mechanical wave. Uh, no, it's mechanical. Uh, and then if it can travel in vacuum, then there is this electromagnetic wave, I think. You can see. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, EM lah. 
So uh, <laughs> uh, under here we get, have a lot of uh, uh, different type of wave, which I'm pretty sure I don't remember all. <laughs> um, huh? Oh yeah, it is oh, standing wave too. Lambat lagi. <laughs> Tapi uh, on the second part, how you want to differentiate them is how um, how they move to that medium, which is um, is it perpendicular? Uh, I use this, uh, or is it for parallel to it? Uh, <laughs> I hope you can understand uh, from this. So the, well, uh, this is the movement of the uh, the wave. I think. Okay. Okay, um, uh, wait for a while. So now it's already five minutes. So I stopped the clock for a while. So you can see, uh, Azim, you have a lot of things more to say, right? <laughs> but when you are in front, it's different when you are sitting down. When you are in front, the clock is ticking so fast. And maybe you think that if five minutes is a lot. When you sit, you think five minutes is a lot of time, right? But then suddenly when you come in front, when you start uh, wearing this microphone, it's like you are addicted and you go through and so on. So in real life, it's like that. Eh? It's not like you go to the exam hall and so on. The real life is like this. People just pick your name, come here, explain like that. So this uh, practice is just to show you that uh, doing sitting passively uh, on your chair is totally different than when you come in front and pass, uh, actively talk. And there are a lot of things you can talk while you are in front. So like Azim said, Azim still until here, still there are a lot more he want to talk. But as I promised, it's only five minutes. So Azim did a good job. Uh, now I pass to uh, Rahani. Okay, um, I usually remember the theory, theoretical part only. So continuing, um, in my head, what I was planning was, uh, in the first week, um, Sir told us about uh, the definition of bio nanotechnology and why we are focusing on the technology part first because the technological part over here and will help us to control the nano parts and then we will use it in biological situation. <laughs> okay, so that's... Um, and then from wave properties, Wait, okay, okay, so take also, your time. Also, so, so also taught us about uh, the electromagnetic waves um, range, like from big, uh, from large, from high, uh, from lower frequency to higher frequency, and how the waves um, act because of. Over here we have ionizing radiation and over here we have radio waves and how these waves are different have different uses in our life. And also um so also talk about uh electron microscope which use why why we use electron instead of waves because electron have charges. Um because uh, that's easy to control when we are using the electron microscope. Um and then so also uh, describe about how particles move in waves. There are two ways. So basically, the same like what Sir has taught. If the if the wave if the particle moves upwards, um, parallel to the waves, uh, and then also. If the particles move al mm, along with the wave, um, so what the one particle could could move like this, and then the other particle could just be compressed and decompress and like that. Um, and then we also learned. Um, mm, <laughs> I don't remember. Huh? Oh, okay. Water ripples. Also waves, I guess. Yeah. Like this. Okay, that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Water ripple waves. Mm, I think that's. I guess. Still what? Two minutes. 
to me it's more. I, I don't really Whatever you you want to say it's okay. Maybe you can uh, say something about uh, the, the the use of weight in your life, whatever. I mean, related to the what we learn lah. Whatever you want to say lah. Oh, the use weight in whatever our life. Whatever you want to say, but related to what we have learned. Oh, what I can remember about the use of weight is uh, use a uh, weight in ultrasound machine for uh, viewing the baby <laughs> inside the womb. So, uh, in the mother's Womb, there will be the baby over here, <laughs> and then uh, the uh, ultrasound wave will uh, be emitted and then reflected back into the um, probe. Uh, uh. So by this way, we can view the baby inside, and then we can see if the baby has any defects or if there's any medical issue we need to um, fix. <laughs> Before the baby is born, it's true. It's true. Mm. So, um, also we use radio waves for radio stations, and then um, what else? Mm. Oh, uh, the use of UV UV waves where we can we can trace if the money is. Real or not, <laughs> because the money has a, a fluorescent substance in it. So when we shine UV wave on it, it will reflect the waves back and glow under the UV wave, um, a UV light. But it does not happen with other waves. Okay, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, you know, it's okay. Stay here for a while. Um, okay, first a correction. Uh, when you shine a black note with the UV, you stay for a while. It's okay, you, you hold that thing first. When you hold the bank note and then you shine the UV, sorry, you shine the UV wave, uh, the UV, um, the, the, what happened is not reflection, it's basically the emission. Okay, they are emission because the, the fluorescent material inside the bank note absorb the energy in such a way that the electron will go to the higher energy level and then it's not stable there, it go back and then it will emit the color i mean the, the the light i mean that's why you see the fluorescence uh, reflection is a little bit different meaning that it doesn't emit it's re-emit later and we, we will talk lah but before i go for the uh, because today is more or less like i want to recap back only lah because uh, uh, we cannot just go straight for the entire course, like a new thing, new thing, new thing, new thing. So there are time we need to stop for a while and then we just recap. So today is more like recap and maybe I will add a little bit more on reflection, diffraction, refraction and diffraction. But before I do that, I just want to ask Rohani lah. Come in front because the camera is there. Uh, what do you feel during the presentation? Because this is also this real life part. Eh? What do you think? Uh, what make you stuck? blank or whatever because i also saw that rohani and also azam use only one color of pen it's difficult right <laughs> to think to write what if it's multiple color so tell me about what is difficult in this thing because public speaking and this is kind of public speaking is very scary yeah? very scary because you are in front it's like you are naked in front and there are many eyes watching you that is the real stuff start to happen, which is what is your real life is all about. It's not about you sit there, write the thing, read this thing, and go to exam. It's, that's not real life. That's just to get the CGPA only. And go out, because I tell you this because you are in fourth year. You are, if you are in first year, I don't do like this. Lah. I, I will tell you in advance. Okay, next class, some of you will present. Okay, but for this fourth year, I cannot do that. I normally I do okay I will give you bonus mark you want you come okay tell me a little bit about what you feel during the presentation uh, generally because I was not prepared uh, pay, pay. <laughs> look at your friend because I was not prepared then I don't know what to talk about <laughs> so I need to come up with it on the spot so that was kind of hard for me okay uh, okay thank you <laughs> So uh, that's why, okay, it's okay, you can put that. That's why when you see, uh, when I'm talking, I'm also learning also. You see, I'm 
writing here, 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 and there, right? They are no like flow a little bit because I still uh, try to get used with this small board. Normally, I use two board, so I can make that first, and then I finish that board, and I go to this board, so they are flow. But now I only have one board, so I hope you can bear with me lah throughout this semester. Uh, you will see something. Sometimes I write here, and then suddenly here, suddenly here. So hopefully you will bear with me about that lah. Okay, so we're done with that. So now today we just want to recap, uh, recap, and also dig a little bit deeper into reflection, refraction, and diffraction. Three things. Okay, in the last class we learned about what? We learned uh, what is the pen? Another pen? Another pen? Okay, in the last class we learned about the properties of the wave. We learned about uh, what? We learned about the absorption, absorption. We learned about the reflection, reflection, and then we learn. We don't learn yet, but we will learn today about refraction, eh? refraction. And then last class we learned about diffraction, diffraction. We learn also about interference and we know that this uh, what we call absorption have something to do with the excitation excitation and also the excitation the excitation and also along this way we also learn about some deionization deionization and uh, we also sort of like learn about transmission lah Transmission is basically when the uh, wave or light pass through lah. Transmission. Okay, so we learn more or less all of these things except for the refraction. Eh? Except for the reaction, we will discuss a little bit today. Um, among all these, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, uh, there are many more. Actually, there are many more properties of the wave. For example, wave can be dispersed. So dispersion. Scattered, scattered. So that's also uh, what happened when you use wave lah. But we only focus up until here only. Eh? We only focus up until here only. From here to here only. Okay. Okay. And among all these six, uh, the one that can bend the wave is three. They are this diffra uh, refraction, diffraction, and reflection can bend the wave. Okay, can bend the path, uh, the, the wave uh, travel path lah. So we we will talk about uh, first. Uh, we will today we will discuss a little bit about reflection because this may be new. Uh, but uh, I want to talk a little bit also about reflection because last time we are quite uh, uh, speed up when we discuss about the reflection. Eh? Uh, reflection is when reflection happens. So I start here. Reflection. Eh? It's happened when the wave uh, return back, return back uh, to its uh, coming medium lah. Meaning that it went uh, return back to medium, to medium where it coming from, eh? coming from. Eh? Okay, wave return back to medium where it coming from. For example, let's say I have for example a paper. Eh? Let's say I have a paper. Let's say this paper, huh? this paper. So this paper receive the wave light from the lamp. We call it source of uh, emission, lah. Okay. This uh, lamp will sort of like bounce off the what we call the light wave, which have like all the rainbow color: red, indigo, orange, uh, yellow, uh, green, uh, blue, indigo, and violet. They go here and then they reflect to me. So what happened if you have like a paper here? Let's say I have a paper here. So let's say I have paper here and then I have some writing. Eh? For example, I put uh, uh, what we call fat, uh, fati, eh? safan fati here. I write the the, the word safan fati. So when you have, like, for example, the light source either from the sun or from the lamp, what happened is that the the wave come here the white light come to your paper and then when it hit the atom inside the paper and also hit the atom inside the ink because this is ink this is paper this is paper paper this is ink 
So each paper and ink has their own atoms. Eh? So when this uh, energy, because wave, electromagnetic wave in, in kind of the light, hit this thing, it basically it gives some energy. But that energy is not enough to excite the, the electron to the higher level. Uh, so what happened here, the, the atom in the paper, the atom in the ink will be oscillate. We sort of like vibrate. Vibrate because of the electrical uh, field coming from the, the light. Lah. Because you know the EM, basically electromagnetic. So the magnetic part doesn't have anything to do lah here. So the electric field will cause the electron to wiggle around. To wiggle around and so on, oscillate here and there. And, and then it will sort of like reflect back, re-emit okay, the electron here. For example, let's say I can have the electron. And then for example here, the electron, electron here. This electron will re-emit. So you come in here and then it will re-emit. Eh? Re-emit. Re-emit the, the what you call the, the wave lah. Re-emit the wave in terms of, for example, let's say this white uh, lamp. So the white lamp. And then it will re-emit all the frequency of the light. Because you see the paper is white because it's coming from the what you call from the lamp, all the frequency uh, coming to the paper, and then you see white because it's re-emit all the frequency of the light. Re-emit all the frequency of the light. Because you see, the, the light has uh, different frequency. Eh? Come in here. Go there, 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 there. Okay, even the light here, from the red to blue, you have a different frequency. So you see white because it's re-emit all the frequency coming, uh, all the frequency available in that uh, source. Lah. But for the black, it's different. For the black, the molecule in the black, what we call in the black ink, it will re-emit only a little but absorb a lot. That's why you see the black. You see black. Okay, you see black because the pigment inside the ink absorb all the wavelength here. Absorb all these things, all the frequency of this color. Okay, and you uh, just re-emit a little bit only. And you can see black lah, because it absorbs all the colors, so that's why you don't see uh, color on the ink lah. So the keyword here is re-emit. Eh? It's different, re-emit, re-emit versus emission. This is different eh? because emission coming out. It's happened when you shine the, what we call the bank note with the UV light. S suddenly you see something glowing, right? This emission, mean that it's emit the, what we call the, the, the white light, uh, the panda floor, the idea of panda floor, for example, you see this uh, fluorescent lamp, you see like this, flat. The idea how this works is that you have this lamp, okay, inside this lamp, they put what? They put inside that lamp, they have this low vapor mercury. HG is mercury, lah. low vapor mercury gas. Low vapor means that mercury in, in, in gas, lah, in gas form. And then it's also put some argon lah. They also put some argon. They put some argon. Argon is basically inert gas lah, noble gas, just to uh, to sort of like to protect the entire thing. So here inside this you have the mercury molecule here. Mercury molecule here. The gas lah. The gas mercury gas here. Yeah. And also some argon lah. Some argon. You have some argon. Some argon um, um, atom lah. So when you switch on, turn on this lamp, I switch on this lamp. So what happening is that, what happening is that I give the electric here, okay? So because of this, of different polarity, let's say this is plus, this is minus. So the electric will move from here to here. Will move from here to here. They are like a voltage different lah. That's why the electric can move. So by doing so, it will collide. It will collide with all this uh, molecule, all this atom. Uh, what do you call this? Uh, what is Mercury atom. So doing so, it will sort of like uh, vibrate the, let's say inside the mercury. Let's say draw this thing. Inside the mercury, like this. Let's say lah. Let's say like this mercury. Whatever this electron, electron, electron. So this uh, mercury atom. So it will collide this thing. It will collide this thing. 
some of the electron will be kicked off. Some of the electron will be kicked off. So that's uh, kick off, kick off, kick off. So this is what we call ionization, lah. Ionization, lah. So basically, you are uh, basically ionize the 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 mercury atom. Some of the energy, some of the energy, will sort of like uh, kick this uh, electron not outside the atom, but just make it goes higher to the uh, another energy level absorption, lah. And then it's not stable here. It goes down back. It will goes down back. By doing so, it will release some uh, what we call some radiation lah. It's like a spring lah. When you release, you get the kinetic energy. But for this, you get the light or electromagnetic spectrum lah. The problem here now, this thing, whatever emitted by this uh, D excitation is in UV range. In UV range. We cannot see UV. Okay, we cannot see UV. Uh, the one that uh, I show you before, even though the name is UV lamp, but it's basically it's a low UV lah. But the real UV you cannot see lah. Okay. So the UV lamp is invisible to human eye. Okay. But then why you can see this white? Why you can see then this white? The reason why you can see this white is that this uh, fluorescent lamp, they put, they coat this thing, they coat this thing, the lamp. This lamp, they coat with phosphor. Phosphor. So now you have another atom, phosphor atom. So imagine now there is phosphor atom. Phosphor atom also have this uh, what we call electron, electron. This phosphor atom will sort of like uh, be excited by this UV range. Okay. So UV range come in. So UV range will come. UV. I mean UV is basically the energy lah. UV come in. So UV come in. It will kick this thing to the high energy level and then not stable, go back down. And then by doing so, now this phosphor, when they de excite, they will release uh, the what we call the, the spectrum that is visible to our eyes. Okay, so this uh, it will release the light, lah, light that is visible, that is visible to our eyes, lah, to our eyes. Okay. So this is basically what we call emission. It's coming out. So when you see fender floor, it's basically a thing that emit light, that emit energy. But most of the thing that you see doesn't emit energy, doesn't emit, doesn't do like this. For example, chair, this, this chair color, this thing, this uh, what you call marker pen, it doesn't emit. It doesn't have this thing happening. What happening is this: reflect only. So that is re-emit. It's not emit. Okay, that is re-emission re of the what you call of the whatever. For example, this paper, uh, the the source of the uh, apa, wave or the light coming from the sun goes to or like this lah. This paper, the source of the light coming from this uh, fluorescent lamp goes to here, and then nothing happen like this. But what happened? They will oscillate the atom, the electron on the what we call on the uh, paper, the cellulose, and then the it's like like a mirror. It will reflect back. So that is re-emission. Ah. This fender flow flat. Uh, this thing is different compared when you have. Uh, apa nama dia? Macam nak pronounce pronounce dia? Hilang. Uh, what about about their name? Incandescent. I don't know lah how I pronounce correct or not. So light bulb lah, normal light bulb. This is not like this. Eh? Eh, more or less like this, but it's a little bit different. Eh? So here, in the light bulb, the one that you see in the road or whatever, they don't use penda floor. They use this thing. They use tungsten. Eh? Tungsten. Everything, when you hit, anything, eh? anything when you hit, it will change color lah. It will change color. So, for example, this thing when you hit hot enough, it will uh, what we call it will glow in uh, red, and then actually it will glow from here to here lah. It will glow from here to here, uh, from red. You, you cannot see green lah, but basically uh, it start from here, and then that's why you see red first, and then yellow, and then the green is basically is mix is mixed with this. So lastly, all the mixture you get white lah. So that's why white, hot white is hotter than the red. Red lah. For example, you have a candle flame like this. 
you can see if this thing is white compare if this thing is in blue compare this thing with the red the hottest one is this the white one because why is the hottest is because uh, it combine all this thing lah all this color of the rainbow you get white lah and then blue and then red lah so this thing um, uh, they emit they emit also but they emit in infrared infrared region they emit most of the light in infrared region if you look here infrared region is before visible light you cannot see so infrared you can feel heat that's why you go uh, infrared thermometer you can see the the color your your ni lah your picture in glowing so that they emit the infrared region most of the emission happen most of the emission happen in infrared region only a few happen in visible light that's why you can see color so uh, we can see 99% is infrared 90 or 99% they release they excite infrared uh, what we call energy instead of what we call instead of light they they give off the light also a visible light whether it's orange or yellow or whatever this just only 1% like that when we create a lamp we want light we don't want heat so that's why people say this is very inefficient compared to this because what you that's why this thing very hot because the emission what happen is in infrared region most of the emission happen what they give off is this part the infrared region that's why you uh, you feel heat very hot only a very few percent release in visible light so that's why it's just uh, inefficient compared to the this uh, fluorescent lamp lah okay so this also this tungsten thing why the, the reason why this tungsten whatever metal when you hit the metal or whatever it will change color change color so that's uh, this color change is dependable on the temperature itself for example um, that's why people will can know how hot is the how hot is the sun how hot is uh, the star that is far away from our earth it's not like they can go there and measure the temperature because because of this lah because they can relate the color with the temperature uh, in fact this thing knowing how the color and temperature relate is is basically the basis of why quantum uh, what the quantum physics born okay because um, people found that uh, so let me go here let me go here what is the thing so let me show here black body black or oh, ultraviolet ultraviolet catastrophe ada okey so go image on dilah go image okey let's go mana yang cantik eh which one is beautiful which one is beautiful this is not beautiful which one is beautiful i think i have this lah i think i have this pet simulation uh ultraviolet yeah, black body radiation black body radiation i will explain a little bit lah black body radiation i think they have the thing uh, pet 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 colorado so basically this simulation so you can see easily lah <laughs> Okay, so you can see here, this is normal temperature. So here is the wavelength. You know about wavelength. That's why uh, we learn about wave because a lot of things can be done with the wave. And this is spectra, blah blah blah, whatever energy lah, energy. This wavelength. So now this is our visible light. Okay. So this is in micron, eh? in micron. So this wavelength lah. So we know this uh, wavelength for the visible light. Okay, so what happen when you try to heat something up? So this is the temperature that is what we call 
common lah. I mean, uh, here lah, normal, normal temperature. And then when you try to raise the temperature, uh, because I need to intensity, not intensity, uh, I need to zoom because it's so small. Oh, I need to zoom here. Lah. Oh, not here, here, here lah. Okay, let's see. Okay, you can see that the color first, eh? the color of the sun, that color. Eh? What that color means is that when you raise uh, temperature of anything, eh, metal, ke, whatever, ke, it will change the color. It will change the color. And the color change is only relation, the relation between color change and the temperature, the, 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 it doesn't involve the material. For example, if you have this and metal, if you try to heat it at the same temperature, the same color you will see. So it's not a function of the material itself, it's a function of the temperature and the color itself, eh, the temperature only. Okay? So scientists try to relate this thing, why this thing happened, eh? why this thing happened, and they found that when they raise the temperature, you can see that in the light bulb, eh? this is a light bulb, light bulb, this one, this one, when they raise the temperature, you can see here, this energy, lah, energy, amount of energy, so you can see most of the energy giving uh, the light bulb, the light bulb give off is coming from this infrared region. This is red, infrared lah. This, uh, you view like this lah. This is infrared radio wave or whatever because you see here, the wavelength is bigger. This is wavelength is smaller. So it's a reverse, huh? reverse than the picture that we see in the slide. So this is bigger wavelength, this is smaller wavelength. Numbers, numbers. Huh? Okay. So you can see the energy given off by the light bulb or whatever mostly on the uh, infrared region here that's why you feel a lot of heat when you open the bulb you see a little bit the bulb give you a visible you you see the lamp glow right because of this some energy is giving off in this region also when you go up when you go up go up go up and you can see the color also like orange here so when you go up temperature of the sun so you see like this, okay? Logically, if you want to do some relationship, the more you increase, the more you have the energy, the more it will increase in this thing, this path will go straight away here. Meaning that um, instead of becoming like this, uh, logically when you do a trend, the more you give the, what you call, the energy, the more the power that you will receive, lah, the, it will should be goes up until infinity. Lah. So, in other words, it says that if you try to hit something hot enough, it will release the, the what you call, the very energetic wavelength, uh, the ve uh, very low wavelength, or maybe gamma, gamma ray. Uh, for example, this thing, as I said, it will give you the the energy in infrared region because most of this here but if you try to sort of like hit this um, in further and further you will see this thing will glow white and so on when it's glow white it's basically uh, radiate the energy in this region lah, in this what we call invisible light and then over time if you increase the temperature uh, high enough Biologically, it will go to this region, which is after the UV. You get the what we call X-ray and then gamma. But that doesn't happen when you try to heat something hot enough. For example, the sun. Eh? You see the sun here is the sun. Eh? The sun temperature. The sun. You see it's glow. Okay. The sun, but the sun only what we call give the uh, the radiation that you can see is in the visible light only. Even though you, the sun is very hot, it doesn't emit uh, what we call this this high energy region like what we call like gamma ray or X-ray or whatever lah. So even you go to the star, very hot star, you can see um, it will sort of like break here. This is UV UV region lah, UV region. Meaning that even though you try to hit something very high it will not be able to give off the 
uh, radiation like gamma or whatsoever. This is what we call uh, UV uh, ultraviolet catastrophe, meaning that no matter how much heat you give, how much uh, heat you give, the glow will not enough, uh, will not emit the this uh, frequency lah. I mean the energetic frequency like gamma and so on. Because if you look here, if you look here, here, by right, if you increase the energy, you will get gamma. But it's not the case. Okay, it will stop here uh, when you hit something lah. So that's basically uh, what happening here lah. But that's um, just a side note only lah about that the thing. Okay, eh? um, okay. So this is about uh, still this about uh, absorption, reflection lah. More about reflection lah. I just want to talk about this reflection, but then I go back to the absorption again. Okay, I repeat again and again. Eh? Okay, so now that's about it. Um, about the reflection, about the reflection, there are law for that. Eh? There are law of reflection. Law of re reflection said that the angle of the incident will be equivalent to angle of reflected lah. For example, if you have uh, slow lah ini. So the law of reflection said that uh, what we call if you have a surface here like this, and then if let's say you make imaginary line, let's say you make an imaginary line here, we call normally we call it like a uh, normal. And then you shine the light or whatever. It is also uh, true for the light or sound. If you reflect here, this thing, and then you reflect that. So the angle here, theta 1, is, will be equal to theta 2. Lah. So when the theta 1 equal to theta 2, we call it a specular, specular uh, reflection. Reflection. Meaning that you get a mirror image. Lah. Mirror image. Mirror image. This uh, true for either light or sound lah. But if let's say your what we call your surface is something like this, what you will get is basically uh, what will happen is basically you have the light here. Uh, wait. Uh, mm. You have the light here. This will go back here, and this will maybe go back here. So this will go back here. So you have sort of like what? Well, in this case, you have same lah. If you have second one, it's also uh, will have this uh, mirror reflection lah. This is what we call diffuse reflection. Eh? Diffuse uh, reflection. Reflection. So in order to get the specular reflection, you need uh, this thing is smooth enough lah. That's why uh, uh, when you are, what we call, uh, during the rain, you have this road like this. Let's say this road. And then after the rain, the, you have the water fill up the, what we call, all this gap. And you can see the reflection of your car or whatever. Lah. Because now the surface is basically enough to reflect, uh, giving this specular reflection. Because the water fill in the, what we call, the gap on this thing. Okay, so what this has to do with the wave? Okay, first, this thing is wave also, but it turned out that it turned out that, uh, for example, the wave length, uh, this roughness, how much it can reflect depend on the wave length. For example, if let's say you have very big wave length, for example, let's say this big. This big, okay, it will reflect like this. It will reflect easily lah because this, uh, what we call this uh, imperfection or this uh, roughness is so small compared to this wave. But if you have small wavelength, for example, like light, like light like this, then it will sort of like uh, get a diffuse reflection. But if you have something that is big, like a radio wave, for example, this is like radio wave, radio wave, radio wave. When I said wave is big, what I mean is that the wavelength is big, lah. That's what I mean when I said a wavelength is big. I mean, uh, the wave is big is that 
the wavelength itself is big. So when you have something big, then you go for the rough surface. The, this rough surface is not enough to reflect this uh, what you call this wave uh, diffusely. So it goes to like as if this is a very <coughs> very polished uh, surface, lah. So this is the reason why you see something like this. Uh, let's say I put here radio telescope. Let's say I draw radio telescope. Radio telescope. Where is the thing? Okay, so picture, picture, picture. Okay, let me open this thing. <coughs> Slow lah internet. So if you look this, ah, this tak nampak jelas. Okay, if you look here, it's like a mesh. It's not like a solid, right? It's not like a solid, uh, like this. Some some uh, dish, this parabolic dish is like this. It's like just a mesh of something, right? It's not like a fully, like this. The reason for this is because, even though it seems rough, for example, light will not be reflected back. But for the radio wave, it can reflect it. So that's the reason why some of the dish like this, they don't need to sort of like make it so perfect. Make it so perfect, for example, if you have this like this, like this, so like this, sometimes you have like a mesh instead of like this, if, in, in, instead of fully, fully curved uh, and polished surface, instead of this, you can create something like uh, like that lah, like that. Meaning that they, they have like what we call hole here and there. You see, there are hole here and there. So the reason for this is because the, this is used to reflect the radio wave, not the light. Okay. So the idea for this thing, for this uh, dish, is basically you have this. Uh, yeah. So the radio wave coming from the star or whatever goes to here coming here and then it will reflect back to here this is the detector lah this is detector detector so the detector will convert into the electric signal and then the human operator can uh, nilah dissipate it but uh, what i want to show here is that the reason why this is not a perfect parabola it's not like a mirror polish is because the purpose for this is to reflect radio wave and radio wave is big so that's why it doesn't need to be like very perfect like this thing lah, like this thing. And remember, radio wave have a different what we call different wavelength. They have a different range of wavelength. For example, this thing, this microphone eh? this microphone also emit radio wave. Eh? This microphone is basically uh, work at 2.4 uh, gigahertz. 2.4 gigahertz. This microphone. Eh? In fact, most of your home appliance, they use 2.4 gigahertz. 2.4 gigahertz, this is frequency. Frequency. We know that we can correlate frequency and the wavelength. Okay. So how to correlate that is using what? How to correlate that? With the speed of light. Huh? So you correlate that with the wavelength is called C over V. Lah. C over V. So we know this... Uh, uh, v <coughs> V is what? Eh? V is what? Eh, v is eh, salah ni. Betul lah. Hmm? Volume list not volume here. Speed of? So this speed of light, speed of light, light, or oh, because we only have, because this this frequency yeah, like this, okay. Because sometimes people use something like this, it doesn't matter. But frequency, so you see now you can have a, what we call, you can calculate what is the lambda here for this thing lah. So if you calculate this thing, how much you get? So the frequency of this is 2.4 gigahertz. 2.4 gigahertz. And then the speed of light is basically 3 times 10 to the power of uh, 8 meter, meter squared. 
So divide this, this divide this, how much you get? How much you get when you do this thing? How much you get this? Because we have uh, learned this before, I just, what we call, uh, to refresh on Lila. How much you get this? What is the, the, the wave? Because this and that in my camera, they emit, uh, the thing in my camera emit the wave coming to here. And then this receive my voice and it will change the, the, the wave coming from the, what you call, from the camera and then it will reflect back to the camera there. So I just want to know how much uh, the, the, what you call, the frequency because imagine this is me and this is my microphone and then this is the camera, my camera there. So this microphone, this transmitter, it will transmit the wave to this receiver, this transmitter, transmitter, this transmitter, this receiver lah, receiver. So I want to know how much is this, how much the wavelength that coming from here to there. This thing, 3 times 10 to power 8, 2.4 gigahertz. Huh? 0 point? 0 point 1? 1? 1 to 5. In meter or in what? In centimeter is what? How much? In centimeter. Huh, 0 point 1 meter? 12.5. Huh? So 12.5 cm, like that. Okay, so basically, this thing, when I say, it will uh, emit the wave, you cannot see lah, because it's, uh, it's big, but then you cannot see because the frequency is uh, very high lah, 2.4 gigahertz. Okay, that's why you cannot see because this frequency is very high, so that's why it's very fast. But the, the, the flow from here to here is uh, 12.5 centimeter. This, that's why, this thing only can work very short distance only. Here to there, maybe until 100 meter only. But if you are using radio in your car, radio in your car, for example, let's say you have uh, the era last time we did, right? The, the station, the radio station, they are in megahertz, right? Megahertz. For example, era is, let's say, 103.3 megahertz. Okay? So this thing, so you have. Oh, battery is low. So, for example, if you do this thing, speed of light, C over frequency, so you get 3 times 10 to the power of 8, divided by, how much this? Times 10 to the power of 6. How much this? Huh? 2.9 meter. Huh? 2 point? 2.9 meter. So, you can see here, this is basically the frequency given by the radio station in Malaysia, one of the radio stations in Malaysia. This is the frequency, which is 2.4 gigahertz, that is given off by this uh, transmitter. So you can see the difference, 2.9 meter from here to here, roughly. The 10 centimeter is just like this. Okay. So for this era, they can travel farther because it have a big, uh, what we call, big uh, wavelength, and also it can what we call it can reflect well to something that is not so smooth okay so this travel shorter but the the what we call the the good thing about 2.4 gigahertz mean that high frequency compared to this uh, radio station 100 megahertz this thing can carry more information than this this can uh, send the signal short length but that signal is more richer this thing even though it can travel far but because the frequency the the, the what we call this thing that the the wavelength is big and also the frequency is lower is not as clean as uh, when you use the microphone in the studio or whatever like, in, in terms of sound in terms of richness lah Okay, but human cannot really differentiate this lah. But when you go uh, very far in terms of, let's say, 12.5 uh, 12 cm compared to maybe 100 meter, then you can see the difference. That also the difference between 
AM and also FM lah. So so you can the AM radio and FM radio. So the error is basically the FM radio. So normally when you uh, turn on the the FM radio, normally they have frequency around like this lah, megahertz like that. This AM radio have the in I think gigahertz, but much higher lah, much higher than this. So the AM radio, they have much higher frequency than uh, uh, much higher or much lower, much lower, uh, much lower frequency than this. I think because my battery is uh, already what you call low, but you can check lah. Your FM radio have higher frequency than the AM radio. Okay, because of that, AM radio can go far. Because when you have low frequency, meaning that you have high lambda. From here lah, when you have low frequency here, frequency you have high lambda, high wavelength lah. So that's why this AM. Even if you are in the wood or jungle, you can still get the signal, but you cannot get the signal for FM. The A and F here stand for amplitude. This is all for frequency lah. Frequency modulation, amplitude modulation, but we don't uh, talk about that lah. Uh, just to let you understand that the how big is the wave can dictate how far it can travel, and then how much it can reflect. Some uh, what we call some uh, surface can reflect some surface. Uh, for example, this surface is rough for light. It's rough for light, but it's polished for the sound. I repeat, this surface, even though it's rough, it is. Uh, it can reflect. The way how it reflect, whether it's diffuse reflection or specular reflection, depend on the wave itself. If the wave is big, then it can just if much much bigger than the what you call. If the wave is much much bigger than this what you call, this imperfection, then the wave can just reflect well lah. But if the wave is smaller than this imperfection, then you get this specular diffusion, something like that. Okay, I think I don't want to go to refraction lah today because yeah, it's already. Uh, 10, 15 and also my laptop also running low. Um, any question here? Because uh, we will not discuss about reflection anymore after this. Any question about reflection? Uh, by the way, before we go, uh, this thing, when you have wave like this and then you make, you fit this wave to the fixed pole, let's say fixed, place and this is like wave when the wave go here like this and then go near and then here this so like this right so the wave coming from side to from the left to right here so this is also kind of reflection eh? the wave goes there so you see successive so the wave goes here here and then until it's reach the end, it will also reflect. This also kind of reflection. Eh? Because we talk about wave, so this uh, also kind of reflection. My laptop died. So that also mark the end of this class. Sir, why uh, the frequency of the distribution uh, in uh, different states are different? Like the error is different. Because uh, why the radio station have different frequency? Eh? Because if you have same frequency, then you get mixed lah. Because the, 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 the what you call, for example, or oh, error in here different than error in in there lah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but the reason why error and IKIM is different because they don't want to mix the signal. So that's one thing to understand, right? But why in Slango the error is 103... Uh, 103.3 and in Terengganu is I don't know when what different I don't know it's not, I don't know maybe, maybe because I yeah I don't know maybe you can tell me next class I don't know about that yeah why yeah?